Good evening and welcome to our Good Friday Liturgy. Everything that you need tonight is printed in your worship bulletin, including all the hymns and responses. Tonight's liturgy is steeped in ancient ritual and symbolism, much of which we try to note in the bulletin. Please do take it home and continue to ponder what you see and hear and feel tonight. At the end of the service, all the lights will be darkened and a loud noise will be made. This symbolizes Christ's triumphant overcoming the grave and a large white candle which we carried in a few moments and hidden throughout the entirety of the service we brought back out as a reminder of the good news that awaits us. Please do come back tomorrow night at 5 p.m. for our Easter vigil. If you can't do that, we look forward to seeing you on Easter Sunday at 9 a.m. or 11 a.m. Since my youth, I have been wretched and at the point of death. 
I have borne your terrors and am helpless. Your blazing anger has swept over me. Your terrors have destroyed me. They surround me all day long like a flood. They encompass me on every side. My friend and my neighbor you have put away from me. And darkness is my only companion. Let us pray. Almighty God, look with loving mercy on your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed, to be given over to the hands of sinners, and to suffer death on the cross, who now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. After Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to a place where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police from the chief priests and the Pharisees, 
and they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, For whom are you looking? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus replied, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they stepped back and fell to the ground. Again, he asked them, For whom are you looking? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword back into its sheath. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? So the soldiers, their officer, and the Jewish police arrested Jesus and bound him. First they took him to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jews that it was better to have one person die for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter was standing outside at the gate. So another disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out, spoke to the woman who guarded the gate, and brought Peter in. The woman said to Peter, You are not also one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the police had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing round it and warming themselves. Peter also was standing with them and warming himself. Then the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. Jesus answered, I have spoken only to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple where all the Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard what I said to them. They know what I said. When he said this, one of the police standing by struck Jesus on the face, saying, Is that how you answer to the high priest? Jesus answered, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. 
But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Anna sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. They asked him, You are not also one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it, and at that moment, the cock crowed. Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, What accusations do you bring against this man? They answered, If this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. Then G the Jews replied, We are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he, was in, when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But 
as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, so you are a king. Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to any voice, to my voice. Pilate asked him, what is truth? After he had said this, he went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no case against him, but you have a custom that I release someone for you at the Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? They shouted in reply, not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was abandoned. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged, and the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and striking him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law he ought to die because he has claimed to be the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have the power to release you and power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it had been given to you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. He said to the Jews, Here is your king. They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but the emperor. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified.
Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but this man said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took the clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took the tunic. Now, the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They, drew, they divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from, the hour, from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there, 
So they put a sponge full of wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, the Jews did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, especially because that Sabbath was a day of great solemnity. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken and the bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. He who saw this has testified so that you also may believe. His testimony is true and he knows that he tells the truth. These things occurred as that the scripture has fulfilled, might be fulfilled. None of his bodies shall be broken. And again, another passage of the scripture says, they will look on the one who they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed the body. Nicodemus, who had first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus still and wrapped it in with the spices and linen cloths, according to the burial customs of the Jews. None, now there was a garden to the place, in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had been buried. And so because it was the Jewish day of preparation and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there.
One of the saddest parts about who we are is that when we are threatened or in fear, our response is less than what we would hope. We could talk all about fight or flight, but usually we respond one way or another, of course. But when left to our words, our response is usually less than what would be hoped for. Tonight we heard some of those less than hoped for responses. Peter, three times, when asked who he is, when he is scared, when Jesus has been taken away, and they don't know what's going to happen next, denies that he knows him at all, three times. When power is speaking, Jesus in and out of Pilate's headquarters, Pilate taking him before the leaders, Pilate offering to let this man go, and let us make no mistake, Pilate is afraid, yes, of an insurrection, but he is no friend to the Jews. When he asks the leaders again, do you just want me to let this innocent man go free? He's done nothing. I can really find nothing wrong with him. The Jewish leaders themselves, the keepers, the leaders, the ones who should say the right thing, at noon say, away with him. We have no king but the emperor. When we as individuals are threatened or fearful, we do less than the right thing that's hoped for. And the sad news is, institutions are no different. When we are threatened, we sometimes say and do less than the right thing that is hoped for. We are enticed by power. We are concerned with keeping ourselves safe. Sometimes it is hard to do the right thing we know we should. We trust in so many other things to keep us safe, sometimes ourselves, Sometimes other things like money, etc. Friends, this Lenten season has been about that, leading up to this moment, reminding us to examine ourselves, to consider those things that we put our trust in above God. Those things that we trust in in those moments where we are threatened and fear to remember who it is that holds our days, that cares for us, that we should turn to in moments where we're scared. Those moments that we are not at our best, that we don't necessarily do the right thing, are exactly what Jesus is taking to the cross, has taken to the cross. We sit here knowing that it is a weighty price. 
probably feeling a bit guilty ourselves. And perhaps also feeling a bit of gratitude. Humble, humble gratitude. That should be where we are right now. Remembering what is happening at the cross for us so that those things no longer will separate us. And yes, the moments will come where they do again. And yet we remember that we're forgiven again and again thanks to that one moment. <clears throat> May we remember the cross in those moments where we feel most threatened and afraid. And may we hold that tight in these next hours as we wait to hear what good news comes after so much has been paid.
Let us pray, brothers and sisters, for the Holy Church throughout the world. Almighty and eternal God, you have shown your glory to all nations in Jesus Christ. By your Holy Spirit, guide the church and gather it throughout the world. Help it to preserve, persevere in faith, proclaim your name, and bring the good news of salvation in Christ to all people. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for Bill and Elizabeth, our bishops, for our pastors, and all servants of the church, and for all the people of God. Almighty and eternal God, your spirit guides the church and makes it holy. Strengthen and uphold our bishops, pastors, and other ministers and lay leaders. Keep them in health and safety for the good of the church. And help each of us in our various vocations to do faithfully the work to which you have called us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those preparing for baptism. Almighty and eternal God, you continue to bless the church, increase the faith and understanding of those preparing for baptism, give them new birth as your children, and keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for our sisters and brothers who share our faith in Jesus Christ. Almighty and eternal God, you give your church unity. Look with favor on all who follow Jesus, your Son. Make all the baptized one in the fullness of faith. And keep us united in the fellowship of love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for the Jewish people, the first to hear the word of God. Almighty and eternal God, long ago you gave your promise to Abraham and your teaching to Moses. Hear our prayers that the people you called and elected as your own may receive the fulfillment of the covenant's promises. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those who do not share our faith in Jesus Christ.
Almighty and eternal God, gather into your embrace all those who call out to you under different names. Bring an end to interreligious strife and make us more faithful witnesses of the love made known to us in your Son. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those who do not believe in God. Almighty and eternal God, you created humanity so that all may long to know you and find peace in you, and that all may recognize the signs of your love and grace in the world and in the lives of Christians, and gladly acknowledge you as the one true God. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for God's creation. Almighty and eternal God, you are the creator of a magnificent universe. Hold all the worlds in the arms of your care and bring all things to fulfillment in you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Let us pray for those who serve in public office. Almighty and eternal God, you are the champion of the poor and the oppressed. In your goodness, give wisdom to those in authority, so that all people may enjoy justice, peace, freedom, and a share in the goodness of your creation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those in need. Almighty and eternal God, you have strength to the weary and new courage to those who have lost heart. Heal the sick, comfort the dying, give safety to travelers, free those unjustly deprived of liberty, and deliver your world from falsehood, hunger, and disease. Hear the prayers of all who call on you in any trouble, that all may have joy of receiving your help in the receiving your help in their need. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Finally, let us pray for all those things for which our Lord would have us ask. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, Behold the life-giving cross, which hung the salvation of the world. O oh, come, let us worship him.
Behold the life-giving cross, on which hung the salvation of the world. O come, let us worship him. Behold the life-giving cross, on which hung the salvation of the world. O come, let us worship him. At this time, we'll take some time to meditate on those words. During this time, you may come forward. You can touch the cross and pray at the cross, or you can stay in your seats, and we'll have some music, too, to help with that.
my people, O my church, what have I done to you? How have I offended you? Answer me. I led you out of slavery into freedom and delivered you through the waters of rebirth. But you have prepared a cross for your Savior. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. O oh my people, O oh my church, what more could I have done for you? Answer me. Forty years I led you through the desert, feeding you with manna on, on the way. I saved you from the time of trial and gave you my body, the bread of heaven. But you have prepared a cross for your Savior. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. O oh my people, O oh my church, what more could I have done for you? Answer me. I led you on your way in a pillar of cloud and fire, but you led me to the judgment hall of Pilate. I guided you by the light of the Holy Spirit, but you have prepared a cross for your Savior. church, what more could I have done for you? Answer me. I struck down your enemies, but you struck my head with a reed. I gave you my peace, but you draw the sword in my name, and you have prepared a cross for your Savior. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy. O oh my people, O oh my church, what more could I have done for you? Answer me. I came to you in the least of your brothers and sisters, but I was hungry, and you gave me no food. Thirsty, and you gave me no drink. A stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not clothe me. 
sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. And you have prepared a cross for your Savior. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed. 